Hi, this is Mr. Max, and I am doing a test that I gave to grade 10s, and this test can also be used by grade 11s, on indices, logarithms, and sequences. Okay, uh, so the very first question, uh, so we can go ahead and maybe call this a memo, okay? Um, we are supposed to simplify this. Now, you know that when you multiply and the bases are the same, you are adding the indices, all right? So when you are adding a negative number, so that's the same as you subtracting it. Okay, so that is one mark, something that you should be familiar with. The next one, well, so this is, um, there are many ways you can do this one, of course. So this is raised to the power negative 1 over 4. So I'm going to write 16 as 2 raised to the power of 4. And remember, that 2 raised to the power of 4 is assigned um, that index of negative 1 over 4. Similarly, the x raised to the power of 8 is also assigned that same index. So what happens now is when you have bases that are raised to multiple indices, you go ahead and you multiply the indices. So when you multiply 4 times 1 quarter, well, you're going to get negative 1. And when you multiply the 8 here times negative 1 quarter, you're going to get negative 2. So you can go ahead. Remember, this is nothing but um, 1 half. All right, so you're going to have 1 over and the 2x squared. So this you have a negative, you're going to take the inverse of the base. All right, so uh, anything or someone else could have put like 0 0.5 upon x squared. It's also the same answer. Right, the next one we are supposed to simplify was uh, 3 cubed uh, q raised to the power of negative 3 divided by 2 cubed q raised to the power of negative 2. So what you can do is, since you can see that the as far as the numbers are concerned, they have exactly the same powers, so 3 or the same indices, so you can put 3 over 2, and then you can keep that index as it is, and then the q, since you are dividing, and once you are dividing, you are going to subtract the indices. Okay, so in a nutshell, um, 3 cubed, well, that is nothing but... Uh, 27 and 2 cubed that's nothing but 8 and then you have got q raised to the power of now you have negative 3 plus 2 that's what happens here all right so you can go ahead and say wait a minute i'm going to have um, 27 over 8 but now the q is raised to the power of negative 1 which therefore is the same as 27 over 8 q well, you can also write that 27 over 8 as a decimal, or you can write it as a uh, proper of as a mixed number. It's totally up to you. This one takes the cake. Remember, we have the 12 here. We have the 8. So our job would be to write them as product of them prime factors. And 12 is nothing but 4, which we're going to write as 2 squared, times 3. So that is how we write uh, 12. So I'm just going to change here. So I'm going to have x minus 2. All right. And then we're going to go ahead, this other one. So I'm going to put a dot for multiplication. That is 2 raised to the power of x plus 2. Okay. So remember, um, nothing much you can do on the numerator for now. The 8 is 2 cubed. Well, it must be raised to the power of x times 3 raised to the power of x minus 4. All right. So let us just... Uh, assign that x minus 2 to each one at the numerator. So that's 2, you have x minus 2, times 3, you have x minus 2, times 2, you have x plus 2. Okay? All of this comes over the same thing. All right? So we're going to put it over 2, and then to the power 3x, times 3 to the power of x minus 4. Now, when you look at the numerator there, we are going to multiply out that first, and we're going to add those indices, okay? Um, so I'm going to go ahead and, and do that somewhere on the on the side there, because um, kind of is some space here, all right? So what happened here, this is going to be 2 raised to the power of 2x 
Remember that 2x I get by multiplying this 2 over with everything in that bracket. And then you have a minus 4, okay? And since you are multiplying this with 2 raised to that power, and if the bases are the same, you are going to add the indices. So I'm going to add the indice of x plus 2 there, okay? So I'm going to add x plus 2. Don't have to put them in brackets in any case, all right? Because, again, as I said, um, there's nothing much that I'm going to do. Now, at the same time, I've got a 2 raised to the power of 3x here under, which is my, it's being divided. So I'm going to subtract the indice here. So I'm going to say, okay, I need to subtract nothing but 3x here. Okay, so so that takes care of uh, of of the twos. Let's just make sure the colors are the same. So that will be three x. So the next thing is I'm going to take three, All right? So I have got three raised to the power of x minus two, and it's being divided by another one. So when you divide, you're going to subtract the indices, and it is important that you put it in bracket because it is an expression, the x minus four. All right, so for us, it's not to clean up what we have over there. And if you really look, you'll have a 2x plus another x that gives you 3x. Take away the 3x, so the x's will basically not be there. So as far as this one is concerned, I'm going to have something like 2 raised to the power of negative 2. This is the negative 4 plus the 2. Okay, so let's multiply that with the 3 now. So the if you were to multiply out this, okay, so you must just be careful. Um, so maybe I'm going to do that uh, somewhere on the side so that you can follow. So basically, you, you're going to have something like um, x minus 2 minus x plus 4. All right, then the x's cancel, and then I have 4 minus 2, which means I'll have a 2 there. All right, so that's going to be a 2 here. So with this, I can work. 2, so this answer here, I can definitely work with this answer. All right, so this is 2 raised to the power of negative 2. That is 1 over 4 times 3 squared, which is 9. Okay, so finally, my answer will be 9 over 4, which you can leave as an improper fraction or any way that you see fit. Okay, so step by step, try it out. Remember, you should always write the bases that are not prime numbers. You must always write them in prime factor form. Express the bases as a product of their prime factors so that you don't end up making unnecessary mistakes. Okay, let's go to the next one. Uh, you're supposed to write 3 minus 3 log 5 as a single logarithm. Now, um, the number 3 is can also be written as a log. So this is log base 10. So we say it's a common log, right? So log base 10 of what number is equal to three? Okay, so in order for me to find what that number is, I'm going to write this from log form back to exponential form. So the number should be 1,000. What does it mean? It means this 3 can be represented as log 1,000. And surely if you hit your calculator and you say log 1,000, you are going to get a 3 as an answer. So that is another way of writing uh, log, of writing 3 as log 1,000. Good. So you're supposed to subtract. So I'm going to bring that 3 over because that becomes the power law. So that's going to be log 5 cubed. Right, as a single log, so you're going to have log, and since you are subtracting logs with the same basis, you are going to go ahead and you are going to, you're going to um, divide the numbers. Okay, right, so we can actually finish this now. So this is going to be log 8, 1000 divided by 125 is log 8. Okay. We don't want the value of the calculator. One, the answer is a single log. Right. Here's some equations um, that we have over here. So 27. So this is 3 raised to the power of x. Right. 27 is nothing but 3 raised to the power of negative 3. Okay. I hope you do understand that. It's 1 over 3 cubed. And then it becomes 3 raised to the power of negative 3. Hope you get that part. 
All right, so once the bases are the same, we are going to equate the indices. So we can drop those bases, and therefore we can say, okay, wait a minute, my value of x is nothing but x equals to negative 3. So x equals to negative 3. Right, the next one, you have got x, I'm going to write it to the power 1, multiplied by x raised to the power of a half. Remember, if you have a root, you change it to fraction index by taking, uh, by rewriting it like that. So any square root is the same as that number or that particular item or base raised to the power of a half. Now, when you add the indices 1 plus a half, 1 plus a half, well, equals to 27. So that gives me x of 3 over 2. I'm going to write 27 as 3 cubed because it's always nice to work like that. So the objective is get rid of this exponent by multiplying it by its inverse. Okay, so once you do that, you're going to have x alone there, and then you're going to have 3 squared if you multiply 3 times 2 over 3. Therefore, the value of x is equal to 9. Part C, you have got um, 2 to the power x minus 8, and multiplied by 2 to the power x minus 64 equals to 0. So whenever you multiply and you get an answer of 0, it implies that either one of these are either equal to 0, or you're going to have to rewrite it like this. So these are actually exponential equations that are masked. So you're going to say 2x, 2 to the x is equal to 8, or 2 to the x is equal to 64. No need to multiply that stuff out, okay? And then 2 to the x is equal to 8. Remember, you can write 8 as a power of 3 that becomes that, or 2 to the x equals to, and if you don't know, then you have to go back and write um, 64 as a product of its prime factors. It's 2 raised to the power of 6. It's 2 raised to the power of 6. So what did I say? If the bases are the same, you equate the indices. So these are the two solutions for x. So x is equal to 3 or x is equal to 6. These are the two acceptable solutions. Okay, then there is 8 raised to the power of x is equal to 0.6 or 0 0.6. So you need to take log of both sides here. All right. So you're going to have to take log of both sides. One of the things that I want you to also remember is once you have a log of a fraction like this, log of 0 0.6, 0 0.1, first of all, you know that log 0 uh, does not exist, right? All right, so what you need to know is that the number here should be a positive number, okay? So this should be a positive number, right? And, and you should know that log 1 is equal to 0. So we are now talking about a fraction, so a number between, you know, between... Um, 0 and 1, so a fraction, okay, should be positive, so that number there should be positive, that is a given, all right, and I'm now looking at a number between 0 and 1, okay, and it can't be 0, right, what is it that I'm trying to, to say? I'm trying to say to you that once you have a log of a fraction, like so, you're going to get a negative answer, all right, so if you have log and we can take our calculator and play a bit so you can get. So if I log of 0 0.6, I'm going to get a negative answer, okay? If it was log of, let's say, 0 0.3, you're going to get a negative answer. If you have log, let's say, of 0 0.9, you're going to get a negative answer. So what does it mean? It means that once you solve these equations, you will have to divide this log of 0 0.6 by log 8. And once you do that, you have to know that I must end up by, or I must end up with a negative number, okay? So if you, if you have a look, you will see that, let's take log 0 0.6 and we divide it by log 8. Then I know, I anticipate my answer to be a negative number. Can you see that? So it's negative 2. The answer should be given to three significant figures. Negative 2, negative 0 0.246. Okay, negative 0 0.246. All right, so that is how you know where what you need to anticipate in order for you to get um, your solutions.
Right, since I'm just working with the common log, you can use the natural log and error log finally base to solve these equations, but I'm just using the common log, that is log base 10. Right, on the right hand side, you have two terms, and your job is simply to write those two terms as one term, using the power law, the two comes over. All right, so I'm going to keep log x equals to, now it's going to be log 3, times now 5 squared is nothing but 25. Remember that when you add logs with the same basis, you multiply the numbers. All right. So I'm essentially end up with log x is equal to log 75. Now something else that you also should know, and that is if you have log, let's say of a to the m and log base a of n, if a and m and a and n are all positive numbers, okay, we already know what m should be, then you can go ahead and say m should equal to n. So what does that mean in a nutshell? So what can actually drop the logs now? Because we've got one term, so here I can drop the logs, and therefore my value of x is nothing but 75. Okay, so you can go ahead and you can write it in there. Also, this is a quite straightforward logarithmic equation. So remember, sometimes you get a negative answer and you will not have you will have to disregard that answer because if you have to replace a negative answer here, it will not make sense. Therefore, you must reject. And this is particularly true for when you get log equations that becomes quadratic in nature and then you get a negative answer and then you check that it doesn't work then obviously you have to disregard it. Even if you get the positive answer, always substitute it back into the log equation to see what it gives you, whether the solution checks out. Okay, so this brings me to the last part that I was doing. This is also a question that I did uh, on one of my videos. So you can go ahead and check the paper two video, the extended video, that I loaded a few days ago, you will see that this question is there. All right, so then you will see the explanations rather in detail. So what you have over here, the fifth term is going to be five, and the denominator is increasing by two. Can you see that? That's one, so it's increasing by two. So this is gonna be uh, seven. So the numerator is an N, natural numbers, as you can see, and here you have two more. So that's the rule. Well, this one's, remember that's 3 raised to the power of 1. This is 3 raised to the power of 0. This is 3 raised to the power of negative 1. This is 3 raised to the power of negative 2. So this must be 3 raised to the power of negative 3, which is 1 over 27. Right. So what is the rule going to be? So the rule has to be something that has got the powers of 3 or 3 raised to some, some index. Now, when you look at the numbers 1, 0, negative 1, they also form a sequence. All right, we just write three of them. One, zero, negative one, okay, maybe negative two. Right, if this is the first term, that's the second term, that's the third term, that's the fourth term. Right, then the first term, okay, is one. The common difference is negative one, okay, because zero minus one. Right, so when you use the formula, the formula to find the rule, you will say one plus n minus negative 1 that you're going to multiply out, right? So once you multiply out, you're going to end up with a rule here, which is going to be 1. Now you're going to have that over there, which is going to give me positive 1, and obviously that's going to give me a negative n. So this business here simplifies 2, and I'm going to write it where it needs to be, to 2 minus n. Okay, and that is the rule for that. Okay, as far as this one is concerned, the next number will just be 3. Okay, and you can also find what that rule is. So this this one here um, for C now. So C, the first term is negative 1, then you have 0, then you have 1, then you have 2. So that's the first term, that's the second term, that's the third term, that is the fourth term. Now, if you have a look at, uh, this is also a sequence that is arithmetic, so the first term is negative 1, we represent letter A. When you talk about the first term, so the first term is that. The common difference is like 0 minus negative 1, or, you know, you take the second term, take away the first term. Okay, we'll see that the common difference 
is equal to positive 1. So what is my rule? My rule will be the first term, which is negative 1, plus n minus 1. Okay, remember this comes from the formula. And I hope that you are familiar with that formula. Here, the common difference is 1. Of course, anything times times 1 will just give you that. So this answer is negative 1 plus n minus 1. This clearly gives you uh, n minus 2, which would be the rule in this particular sequence. Okay, right. Again, as I said, you can go ahead and have a look at that. Right, so look at the first sequence. You have got the numerator, and the denominator is always two, two more than whatever the numerator is. So when you are now looking to consider to do part B, now, you we know that that was the original formula. This is not a term in the sequence here. All right, a common error is students think that that is going to be the 36 term because they just look at the numerators. You see that for each one of these terms, the denominator is always two more than whatever is on the numerator. So 36 over 37 is not a term of the sequence. If you were to look for the 36 term, it would have been like so, okay? This would have been the 36 term. So this is not a term in the sequence. We are rather looking for a term that is equivalent that if you were to um, simplify it, you get this. So you can use the rule uh, and then you can equate it to find what is that term. Is it the 27th term? Is it the 88th term? And stuff like that. Okay, so basically you can do cross multiplication, and if you do cross multiplication, you're going to have 37n equals, then you have 36 in brackets, you have n plus 2. So this is 37n equals 36 plus, remember, you are going to um, multiply out uh, 72. Right, so this rather, it works neatly into um, 37 n minus 36 n equals to 72 and look that now you see that that is the 72nd term okay so if you have to know what that term would be so term 72nd term would be um 72 over two more than that, 74. If you were to take this and you simplify it, let's say you divide the numerator by two and the denominator by two, you're gonna have half of 74, half of 72 rather is 36, and half of 74 is 37. So, not the 36 term, but the 72nd term. So be very careful for that, okay? So you don't fall into that trap. Okay, so six marks you get, a mark for this 5 over 7 here, for the 1 over 27 here, for the 3, and for your rules that you have over there. Okay. All right. So stand by for more videos helping you to prepare for your examinations.